Hello again. Yes. Hello again. I'm afraid uh, I have to be very brief and uh, I, uh, to give the the microphone actually to participants to introduce themselves. I will be really very short in my presentation because time is running and we have only 15 minutes until we get to where we should be. Uh, so my presentation is going to be really short and uh, uh, give the microphone to the participants to introduce themselves. Uh, so uh, let me give you some background on endocrinology, endocrinology of aging which actually is a very, very complicated and dark area uh, in medicine, not in endocrinology or in dermatology. Well, uh, human aging uh, has been associated with uh, many diseases. As we're getting older, the risk for developed diseases is increasing, and you can see it how it goes here. For men and women regarding cardiovascular disease as they were getting older, dementia rate, which uh, women they, you know, are, are higher than men, as well as cancer rates. Now, from this uh, slide, you may uh, consider that there is a difference between men and women, and in fact, uh, new data are coming showing that women and men are aging in different speed in different ways. We don't know much about it, and the area is still very dark, and there are no enough data to give us a background on this uh, uh, observation. Uh, actually, what really means is this, that we should develop and we should enter a gender-specific medicine approach, which is not only for aging, for, but uh, for other types of diseases as well. Now, what do we see actually uh, as uh, uh, changes in the aging person regarding endocrinology? It's like secretion of the hormones is altered, sensitivity as well as circadian rhythms appear to be are lost. Are they really lost? No, really, they changed. In fact, if we are a little bit more optimist and more realist, means that as we're getting older, older, the endocrine system is adapted, is modified to accommodate our uh, changing tissues. Therefore, there are, these are the main points of my talk. There are three points of aging, one point of anti-aging, and I'll go a little bit uh, to give you a background, a global view of this, because after me there will be speakers which will give you specific background on different endocrine abnormalities or endocrine alterations during aging. What you see here, these are the nine hallmarks of aging, starting from genome instability, going to epigenetics, and then nutritional deregulation, which are all are working together, contributing to a modification of intracellular pathways during aging. And if you look at this picture here, which actually I don't know which way it goes, but anyway. So, which way it goes? Ah. Oh, no, this is for changing. I want to go from addiction. Okay. If you see what's happening intracellularly, it actually is triggered from external factors as well. The environment plays a very important role in the way which intracellular pathways are affected during aging. In fact, the environment from all these factors, which start from radiation, diet, stress, pollutants, are interfering with the intracellular signaling of aging cell in ending up to decrease the repair ability and main, uh, increasing the damage of the cells, which actually, as the aging process uh, moves on, proceeds, 
shows that the repairing ability of the aging cells is, is impaired. And in fact, if we look a little bit more deeper and look at the exogenous and endogenous ages, uh, agents which are altering and causing DNA lesion and making our DNA to become older through these uh, alterations, we realize that the environment is one of the major contributors to the way we are aging. And in fact, actually, there are uh, many endocrine disruptors which are interfering with our endocrine system and making it to age faster. Now, is any uh, beneficial external or environmental factor which could have a positive effect in our aging and in fact decelerating our aging process? There are some evidence that actually maternal care can be one of these factors. Data are not many, but there is evidence that the maternal care may have important implications in the development of preventive approaches to uh, our aging. Now, looking at these nine hallmarks, we can focus briefly on the nutrition, which plays a very important role and triggers intracellular pathways of growth factors and insulin, which are triggered by nutrition and are activated and contribute uh, with aging processes. And this is more obviously shown in calorie restriction uh, st status, where when there is calorie restriction, the opposite way these pathways are activated, preventing aging process or decelerating aging process leading to health span longevity. Any of these processes we just mentioned contribute individually in the increase of health span longevity and this can be shown after calorie restriction. Looking at the aging of the endocrine system you can see that uh, things are uh, going down and several hormones are reduced during the aging process, then I would like, however, to focus on two of these hormones, growth hormone and insulin, and in fact, uh, through these two hormones, uh, uh, talk about the paradoxical changes which occur during the aging of the endocrine system. Actually, what we see is that GH secretion markedly decreases as we getting older. And associated with decreased IGF-1 levels, and these are observations in animals as well as in humans. However, however, natural experiments and the Ecuadorian individuals who have the Laron syndrome, and endocrinologists are very familiar with it, it's the syndrome with GH resistance, these people are lacking growth hormone effect. And despite this, they have reduced type 2 of diabetes and other endocrinopathies. Now, this is really a paradoxical change of growth hormone and IGF-1, where appear to decline during normal age. And you can see here that the growth hormone signaling affects, affects and decreases IGF-1 as well as insulin secretion, although on the other hand, increases adiponectin level and antioxidant enzymes, which in fact, some of them end up to increase lifespan. So changes in growth hormone, which are expected as normal in normal aging, show that by decreasing the levels, they, it ends up to increase the lifespan. Now, Therefore, the question comes, this change in growth hormone, is it really so paradoxical or it is actually a necessary adaptation process? Well, uh, there are uh, data which have shown that uh, in animals which you uh, knock out GH receptor, these animals actually appear to have longer life. They, 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 they appear to be uh, uh, having a better aging process. So even more recently it has been shown that by, by uh, uh, knocking out insulin intracellular signaling 
or one of the two pathways through the RAS pathway, that leads to increase and extend lifespan in this uh, fly, in this type of flies. And these findings are suggesting that by knocking out the growth pathways, the IGF-1 pathway and the insulin pathway, actually that leads to increase the longevity of these animals and extended lifespan, suggesting that, that uh, by interfering through these pathways that might be uh, targeted medications could be, uh, 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 or this area targeted medication could block the pathway leading to increase longevity in uh, uh, experimental animals. Therefore, the role of growth, growth hormone in the control of human aging continues to be hotly debated. And in the next session, Professor Maku is going to give you more data on this area. A similar controversy exists regarding insulin resistance, where actually it has been shown that insulin resistance is a bad thing, and you, as you're aging, it gets more and more. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, there are animals which have been knocked out regarding the insulin uh, intracellular pathway, and these animals are living longer. And uh, this suggests, on the whole, collectively, that the optimizing axis to promote health aging in human is more complex than we have thought so far, while requiring greater understanding of this area of the interactions of tissues and uh, uh, hormonal signaling. There are controversial endocrine interventions for the aged person, and in fact, what we would like to do is that to uh, increase the knowledge of the current day doctor in a way to be able, for him to be able to make most appropriate decisions for hormonal replacement therapy. Since what we've taught from the WHI study by replacing hormones with uh, uh, hormones which are very important and necessary for the young woman when they are replaced to Postmenopausal women, actually, they act in a different way. So we have to be very careful to, you know, to apply hormonal replacement from young uh, uh, organisms to the aging organisms. And finally, I would like just to mention a little bit about interventions of slow aging in humans. Well, have the question, are we really ready to have a slow aging agent uh, uh, medications. And as you heard before from Professor Zubulis, that this is the Ponce de Leone uh, story and imagination of having the fountain of youth, which actually was one of the things which Alexander the Great was also searching in his uh, trips. However, we don't really have medications to slow uh, the aging process. Nevertheless, there are some uh, interfere some uh, uh, substances like rapamycin and some uh, medications like metformin or resveratrol, which actually could contribute and by several mechanisms interfering in the intracellular pathways may alter and may decelerate the process of the aging cell. There are Recent data is showing that metformin and resveratrol uh, may contribute to delay endothelial senses, but these are in vitro experiments and we have really to be very careful how to interpret and uh, to extrapolate that these are applicable to uh, humans in vivo. And what has been shown beyond any doubt is that calorie restriction is a major Age decelerator is the major uh, aging, uh, anti-aging uh, uh, approach. And through several pathways, intracellular pathways, can decelerate and can interfere by molecules like ACT and activating FOXO, the yellow ones in activations and are anti-aging molecules, can contribute to 
reduce the aging uh, uh, speed with which uh, we are uh, getting older and increase the longevity. Well, there are no detailed reports in humans regarding the role of calorie restriction on longevity. However, it seems clear that a reduction in calorie intake in human improves health span. And I would like to close with this very interesting slide, which actually shows the intracellular many points where aging can act and disrupt either the cytoplasm or the mitochondrial or the nuclei interfere very strongly, leading to aging. All these parameters are contributing and are converging to increase and accelerating our aging. Uh, and therefore, we really have to consider these processes very carefully. This is from the group of uh, Professor Tavenarakis in Crete, where he has done a great deal of work. You could make it to this meeting this time. But this is from his work, which is an outstanding contribution to the aging field and shows what we also believe to do what you can with what you have wherever you are. Thank you for your attention.